In this uh, lecture, we're going to derive the solution to another PDE, linear, homogeneous, called uh, the wave equation. Now, if you look at um, equation one, it is slightly similar to the heat equation or the diffusion equation that we've looked at, except there's an extra subscript. Instead of u sub t, it's u sub tt. C squared here is a constant, uh, known as the wave, wave speed. And we're considering this equation for x on the entire um, uh, real axis. Okay, So this makes it a little bit different uh, from the boundary value problem that we looked at with the heat equation. Now we have initial conditions. So the phi and the psi can be thought of as known functions. Uh, physically speaking, the phi is like the initial displacement of the string at time t equals zero. And the psi is the initial velocity of the string at time uh, t equals zero. So if I had to draw a little picture, Suppose I've got a string that's infinitely long and that string is vibrating. Okay, So if the horizontal axis is the string's equilibrium position, then u at position x at time t is the position of the displacement, I guess, above or below that equilibrium position. So let's say I'm here. This distance here would be u of x t. So at some t point, that would be the shape of the string, uh, some fixed t. Okay. Now this particular problem is known as an initial value problem. And the form and the solution method is far simpler than the, than the boundary value problem associated with this problem. And in fact, on Wednesday, we will solve the boundary uh, value problem associated with this, with the wave equation. But it's quite uh, intense and it takes, it'll take the whole lecture. So as a little introduction, we're going to consider a simplified version where you have an infinitely long string, the string set in motion, it vibrates, and you have the initial displacement, initial pluck, if you like, and the initial velocity given by phi and psi, uh, respectively. Now, I'm not going to derive the uh, wave equation. Okay, I, I did spend quite a bit of time deriving the heat equation, but I've put a little reference down here um, to a book uh, on introductory PDEs, if you are, are interested. So let's have a go and see if we can derive the solution to this subject, to, to this and this. Okay, so essentially what we do is we make a change of variables and we break the wave equation down to a simple differential equation. OK, so let's make a change of variables, p and q, defined in this way. And if I rearrange these equations to make x and t the subjects, then I can come up with the following relationships between uh, uh, x and p and q, and t and p and q. So, suppose u is a function to my wave equation form here. Now, the key to this working is to show that that box PDE holds. 
if I can show that that box PDE holds, then I can just integrate it directly and solve. So what I'm going to do is calculate u sub p from this form, and then u sub p q, and show that it equals 0. Okay? So I claim here that if u sub p q equals 0, then integration yields this. Let me show you why that's true. So let's call this uh, star, for example. Let's just integrate both sides of star with respect to q. Okay, on the left hand side I'm going to get u sub p. And on the right hand side, well, I don't get a constant of integration. I get a function of p. So integrate the left hand side to get u sub p. On the right hand side, I'm, I'm not going to get a constant, it might be a constant, but um, essentially I'll get a function of p. Okay? So that bottom right hand corner can now be integrated again, both sides, with respect to p. So we integrate this side with both sides with respect to p yields the following. Well, the left hand side will just be u. The right hand side will be, well, let's integrate here. And again, I'm going to get another constant type of integration. But it's not a constant, it's a function, right? Because we've got partial derivatives here. So when I integrate with respect to p, I'll get some function of q. So let's just simplify the bottom line and just write this as just little f of p. Okay? So just to keep the notation simple, I've let this just be this function. Okay? So if we can show that this starred PDE holds, then my solution is of this form and just replace P with X plus CT and Q with X minus CT, then I've got some sort of general form of the solution. And in fact, what I'll do then is say, well, what, you may ask, well, what's little f and little g? Well, we're going to use the initial conditions to come up with um, uh, those functions. All right, so let's compute this derivative and show that it, that it does actually uh, equal 0. So we can use the chain rule. Remember back to week 1. The chain rule. Okay, so in this setup, what we like to do is draw a little picture. So u depends on x and t, and x is a function of p and q, and t is a function of p and q. Just using uh, these relationships here. And so what you can do is formulate, uh, formulate your chain rule, so u sub x times x sub p plus u sub t times t sub p. That'll give you u sub p. And what you can do is calculate these derivatives, x sub p from here, and t sub p from here. So you come up with these two things. Okay? So now what I can do to calculate u sub p q is just go through it again, but you'd have a u sub p up here. Okay? 
So to calculate u sub pq, we want to calculate all the paths from getting to the top from the top to a q. There's two paths. I can go down that path or down that path. And when I go from letter to letter, I form a derivative. Okay? So it's u sub p sub x times x sub q plus the other u sub p sub t times d, uh, t sub q. So I get this form. Okay, well, if I take my u sub p from up there and differentiate with respect to x, I'll get this. x sub q is a half again from the previous page. If I take my u sub p from up here and differentiate with respect to t, I'll get this. t sub q is again from the, you can calculate that from the previous page. And then assuming, assuming the mixed derivatives commute, in other words, um, u sub tx equals u sub xt, which is a reasonable assumption, then you'll get some cancellation. These terms will cancel. And you're left with this. Now by assumption, u satisfies the wave equation, so this will be zero. So what do we see? This equals zero. So it means that our format of solution must be in this form. So the challenge now is to calculate little f and little g. So let's do that. And the fundamental idea is to use the initial conditions to find a suitable form for little f and little g. We don't know what they are yet, but we're going to use some more information to calculate them. Okay, so these are our initial conditions. Uh, where are you? There. So let's use those. Okay, well, if we apply those two initial conditions to our general form 4, you'll see the following. You get these two equations. So what we would like to do is solve these equations. And to simplify the situation, we're just going to introduce some sort of neutral variable. So let's just rename the variable x in here with s. It's just going to make things a little bit simpler. All right, so let's differentiate 5 and rearrange 6, and we come up with these sets of equations. Notice I haven't written any variables in there yet, okay? I'm just sort of leaving them, leaving them um, unassigned for a second. Now, if I say add these two equations together, they'll simplify. And if I subtract one equation away from the other, you'll also, you'll also get a simplification. So now we get two equations here, which can just be solved by integration. Okay, you integrate both equations to reveal f and g. So, integrating those two equations, you'll get something like this, where the big A and the big B are constants of integration. Okay. Now, just make sure you've got an X minus CT here. I think in your notes you had a C minus CT. So, let's replace S with X plus CT in, in here. And do a similar replacement with x minus uh, ct in, in the g uh, form. Then we have the following. Whoops. Okay. So all we need to do now to get our form, okay, essentially I've just added these two things together and simplified with the one integral sign. Okay, these two can be combined when you add these things together. So essentially all I need to do now is, is find these constants big A and big B. How can I do that? Well, I can use 5 here. 
okay? If you employ 5, you'll see that big A plus uh, big B equals 0. So this term just actually disappears. So this whole um, solution then is of the following form. Now, I know that looks quite complicated, but just sit back and, and take a look at it for a minute. The solution, D'Alembert's solution, involves the initial functions, the phi and the psi, which will be given to you. They involve the wave speed, c, some constant c, which again is determined from the equation. Okay, so even though this looks quite complicated, it's actually very simple to apply once you know your phi and your psi and your wave speed, c. So let's have a look at an example and see um, how it works. We're given a wave equation with some initial conditions. The wave speed here it would be one half. The initial displacement is just the zero function. And the initial velocity is a periodic function, 8 sine 2x. So let's see if we can solve that and use D'Alembert's solution just to form a general solution to this problem. Okay, so c squared's one quarter, and we're assuming c is positive. So the wave speed is just a half. The initial displacement is just the zero function. So it's just identically equal to zero. And the initial displacement is just given by 8 sine 2x. Okay? So all we need to do is use this format, D'Alembert's form, and solve. So let's call this um, D for D'Alembert. Okay, so the general form of solution is this one. All right, so this still looks quite complicated, but it's actually very simple for our case because this function is identically equal to zero, so that first term is just zero. C is a half, so one on two C will just be one. And our initial displacement, instead of writing it as a function of x, let's just write it, say, as a function of v, a dummy variable. So all I need to do is that final integration, and I'm finished. So this integral is going to be, uh, come something like uh, minus cosine 2v, and just uh, there'll be a factor of 4 out the front. So if I sub in, I'll get the following. Oh, minus. <laughs> 